what are your thoughts on deloads? And, and I think especially deloads for that beginner intermediate population, which is probably the majority of, of who you and I work with, the majority of probably the people who are listening to this podcast are working with. Um, what's your thoughts on, on deloads? For that population, beginner intermediate, you know, they're not training for the Olympia. This isn't their career. This isn't their like number one favorite thing in the entire world. Uh, for that population, deloads are going to come naturally. Deloads come when they fly to Wyoming to visit their grandma for Christmas. Deloads come when their kids have spring break and they go to Florida and they might do a little pumpy workout in the hotel gym or they might just take an entire week off. Deloads come at random times throughout the year. Deloads come when you get sick and you get the flu in the fall and you have to take a week off of training. Deloads come naturally and training breaks come naturally throughout the year. Uh, frequently enough that you don't need to schedule a deload every four or five or six weeks. Correct. You know who I think aside, and we could talk about this, but aside from like the, the professional athlete, if we're talking about the everyday person, I think the person who really benefits from, from plan deloads is that we'll call it 14 to 24 year old kid who is just fucking obsessed with the gym mm -hmm. this kid and boy or girl i don't care boy or girl around 14 to 24 they go to the gym and they are there and every set is taken to complete failure they're there for two hours a day six days a week and they love it this is the kid who needs plan deloads uh -huh. because left to their own devices they will train to failure every single set of every single workout, five, six, seven days a week. And they need, hey, every four to six weeks, you're taking one week of, and I wouldn't even say you have to go 60%. I would just say, no going to failure. Just don't go to failure. Like, just don't go to failure. <laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> no failure for this one week. That's it. And I remember being that young and people would say, you got to take a deload and just go really light or like go at 50% or they would even be like, just don't go to the gym. I'd be like, don't go to the gym. What are you, an <laughs> idiot? Like, what do you mean? Don't go to the gym. I'm going to go to the, like, I would be in the gym the day before a powerlifting competition. I just loved being in the gym. Mm -hmm. It was just, don't go to failure. That's it. Um, otherwise, just like you said, for the average everyday person, you don't need a, pl I don't even think you need a, a deload week. I think that you can really just be like, oh, you don't feel very good today? Okay, just go lighter today. It doesn't need to be a whole week of lighter weight that week. It can literally just be like, oh, do you not feel so good today? So maybe instead of doing three sets, we'll just do one or two working sets and you just reduce the intensity. But then maybe they come in the next day and they feel great. I'm not going to say, well, you still have to be on a deload today. It's like, no, if you feel great, then fucking push it. Mm -hmm. Go really hard. It's. I think it's much more just... Let's go based on how you feel on any given day. But I don't know if you have a newborn or if you're traveling a lot for work and you haven't slept much over the last month and a half. Yeah, let's just take this week light. Let's just not go crazy this week. It's 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 so it's much more simple than people would really have you believe. Yeah, completely agree. Do you have any strong opinions on deloads versus training breaks? It, you mean either reducing weight slash intensity or taking time away from the gym? Yeah. I think it really depends on the person. Um, if you're a person who loves the gym, like I couldn't really imagine telling you to, you need to leave the gym. You love the gym. Mm. Like you're born to be in the gym. Like you love, like I feel like you love working out now just as much as you did when you were younger. It's just like, it's a different, it's a different training style and different goals, but you still love working out. Like you love lifting. I'm not going to tell you, you got to take a week away from the gym. Whereas for someone else who hates working out and they force themselves to do it and they show up three to four times a week, every single week, and they've been doing it for three months. Yeah. Take a week off. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Go hiking, go mm -hmm. swimming, go rock climbing, whatever it is. Like take the, just don't go to the gym this week. I think that is a, is important for that type of a person who's just forcing themselves to go every single week and they're doing it. But for the person who hates to go and also doesn't go consistently, 
No, like <laughs> you've got to show a certain level of consistency before you decide to take that week off. Yeah, I agree.